And when we often think about ways of restructuring the government, often it requires sort of a sense of nobility, right? It's like, oh, we're, we're going we're gonna to take away power from ourselves. You know, we're, we're going to rein ourselves in. Um, you know, it, it, we're, we're going to elect in good good people that you know, understand how dangerous and bad government is, and therefore they're going to be able to act on the greater selves and yada, yada, yada. The reason why I think this is such an interesting political approach and something that, 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 that I, I, I expect to gain traction over time is that it creates more crowns, <laughs> right? It, it, allows, it allows for smaller fish to become bigger fish by the ability to redraw lines, right? And, and I think that that self-serving sort of aspect, while it's something that we often do not like to talk about, I think is important for seriously considering how do you, how do you reform a system without collapse? And then I think there's an, there's an additional level uh, lever here where you know, when you, when you have the ability for public referendums to break away, I think that has, you know, we, we've seen it play out with, with Brexit with, you know, results there. I, I think people, you know, it's, it's been a little disappointing, I think, but Brexit was an example of a popular, po popular referendum used to break away a tie from a larger political entity. Um, you know, in, in recent years, you know, populist democratic leaders um, have been sort of uniquely positioned to you know, stick it to you know whatever the the larger uh, uh, you know ideological persuasion of the elite, the global the global elite, whatever you want to you know, how you want to see it out there, right? Being able to to consolidate with a sort of a popular approach to you know resetting political lines, I think I think it's a line. Of, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, we we are, we're living in such an era of you know, uh, democracy and civil liberties that are very hostile, I think, in their nature to liberalism and the Misesian tradition, right? You know, these, these are all affronts to property, right? So the, these are things that we do, we, we are inherently distrustful of because they allow for various forms of positive rights that create tyranny upon others. But given that we live in an age of democracy and civil rights, we have to figure out a way of challenging the status quo from a perspective that will appeal to normies raised in this era of democracy and civil rights. And so therefore, I think popular referendums to break away from a state capital to empower the voice of their populations by improving their standing on the federal level, to create representation for a minority group, however you want to define that, um, to, to have their voice heard. Well, there is going to be that pushback from this broader partisan conversation that permeates everything. I think that is ultimately the strongest footing out there that has had success against prevailing political winds. And again, that's why I, I think this is something it, we, we, there's, there's growing discussion out there about secession. Right. And a very good book, Breaking Away, Case for Smaller Polities by, by Ryan McMakin at the at the Mises bookstore. Um, there's been, you know, th that conversation has come up, national divorce has come up within mainstream conservative circles. Um, I, th I think in the short term, there are very real practical issues there. Um, Daniel McCarthy, I think, has some very interesting insights on that. I, I think this is a, is a natural middle ground that needs to be taken more seriously. And I, I think that's, that's and again, the, 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 the examples of Switzerland, you know, I think that the left has, has had a the Bernie Sanders crowd has benefited a great deal, um, particularly in the conversations of health care, right, by often misrepresenting but pointing to real life examples of how those very sophisticated Europeans do things. And why can't, you know, why, why can't us Yanks have it as good as the you know, the Swedes do in their medical system? Um, I, I think, you know, pointing to, well, hey, those Swiss are doing all right. You know, perhaps we should take something out of their book. Um, I, I think that also helps in trying to how, how do you get someone who is not going to you know, read Nations by Consent to Murray Rothbard, get on board by Nations by Consent. And I think this is a way of getting to that, that middle ground.